Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about for loops. Now, for loops are a fundamental aspect of every programming language, and they're very important to understand. And I can almost guarantee you that any program you write will use multiple for loops. So pretty much what a for loop is, it allows us to kind of automate a task, do something a set amount of times. And typically when you use a for loop, you're using that because you know how many times you want to do something or like a condition is going to tell you how many times to do something as opposed to what we're going to talk about in future videos, which is a while loop. Well, you're not really sure how long it's going to go for. So you do something based on a condition, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. So let's start um, and just do an example of what a for loop can really like solve for us, for example. Okay. So say this is a pretty simple example and um, you guys will see in a second, but I create an integer, uh, let's see int x equals zero and say that I want to add one and then I want to add two to it and then I want to add three to it and four and five and six and like an infinite amount of times I want to add to that variable. Well, we could do like x um, plus equals one, we could do x plus equals two, like and keep going and adding things to x and we could just keep copying and pasting this down our program. But obviously that's terribly inefficient in terms of a typing standpoint. And what if we wanted to change this? What if every time we run the program, we want to ask the user how many times they want to add like a pattern like this to X? Well, then we would have to constantly keep changing uh, the numbers here, right? So this is where for loop can kind of come in handy. So the syntax for for loop, I'm just going to type it out and then we will uh, talk about exactly what it does. So it has these brackets here and in here, we're going to put uh, three things typically. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to first start off by declaring a variable. So in this case, I'm going to say int x is equal to zero. Okay. Now this can be called whatever you want. Typically people call it I, I like to use X, but you know what, let's just use I. Uh, and then what you're going to do, for this next, so you're gonna put a semicolon, and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set a condition. So I'm just gonna do this and then talk about it because it's hard to kind of do them step by step because they all work together. Uh, less than equal to ten and i plus plus. Okay. So what I've just done here actually is I've first started by declaring a variable i. It's equal to zero, and then I've said we're gonna do this while i is less than or equal to ten, and we're gonna add one to i. So pretty much the way this works is every time we execute what's in these little square brackets here, I is going to have one added to it. So this is what's known as the increment. And this comes at the end of your for loop. So this is what you're adding to the variable I, which you're declaring here every time you run the loop. Now this here is your condition, and this is going to state how many times the loop is going to run. So in our case, we're going to run the loop and well, I is less than or equal to the value 10. Meaning we're going to start at the value zero because I equals zero. We're going to run this loop. Then we're going to come back up here. We're going to say, OK, what are we doing? We're adding one to I. Then we're going to check this condition. So I is not equal to one. We're going to say, well, is one less than or equal to 10? No, it's not. And then we're going to loop through and we're going to continue looping through until eventually we get to the point where we add to I. It's equal to 11. 11. Well, that's greater than 10. So we break out of this loop and you guys will see uh, when I start printing stuff to the screen exactly how this works, but I hope that was a decent explanation of the way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print I here and I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen, right? So we're starting I at zero. So the first loop here, we're going to come through I is equal to zero. We're going to print zero. Next loop, we come up, we add one to I check the condition. We're okay. We can keep going. We're at one and we're going to print from zero to 10. So watch when I run here, we get zero all the way up to 10. Okay, that's how the for loop works. So we execute whatever's in between these little curly braces um, 10 times or 11 times in this case, because it's zero to 10 is 11, All right? Now we can change this increment. We can change this condition. There's a lot of things that we can do in this for loop. So here we say for uh, int i equals zero, I could do for int i equals five and I can start at the value five. And now we're gonna start and we're gonna go from five to 10 looping one, two, three, four, five, six times, right? We're printing six different values, okay? Um, so that's like, you can do that. If I try to do something like I equals 11, well, watch what happens. Nothing prints to the screen. And that's because 11, well, that's greater than or equal to 10. So the loop doesn't even run one time, right? So let's go back and let's start at zero. And now let's show what we can do in terms of incrementing. So to increment here, we can do I plus equals and then any value we want. So in this case, if I do five, we're going to start at zero. We're going to add five. We're going to add five again. So we get zero, five and 10, and you can change this to whatever value that you want. 
Okay, same thing here with the condition. These can also be variables. I feel like I don't need to tell you that, but if I do something like int x equals five, then I could do i plus equals x, right? And we can add that integer to it. We could add x as the bound here, so less than or equal to. This could be greater than. This could be greater than or equal to. So I'm just gonna quickly go over one thing that a lot of people get confused with uh, for, with for loops. And it's when we're gonna stop and when we're gonna start. So when we say less than or equal to 10, this means we're gonna start at this value and now assuming we're adding one, okay? Uh, we are going to stop but include 10, meaning that I will hit the value 10, uh, we will print 10 to the screen. Now, if I remove this equal sign, this is only gonna happen while I is less than 10, which means that if I is 10, well, 10 is not less than 10, so we are not gonna print 10. So if I run this, you can see we only get up to the value nine. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because what we typically wanna do with loops is we want to loop through something or look at some data and typically that data is in the form of an array. So now, and this is why I talked about arrays before, I'm gonna create an array, so an integer array, it's called ARR, is equal to, and let's just give it some values here. It's like one, five, seven, three, four, five, okay? This is gonna be our integer array. Now, what do I wanna do if, or how am I gonna do this if I want to look through my array and uh, look, at, look at these values and maybe check if a value is equal to seven or value is equal to five or something like that? Well, the way that I can do this and this is like a dynamic way to do it, is I could count the length of the array. I could say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six elements. So I would put i is less than six here. But a more useful way to do this is to just get the length of the array. And the way that I can do that is just to do arr.length. Or I actually don't need these brackets, sorry. Um, so we'll just do this. In this way, say the user had typed in a bunch of elements, we had put them in an array. We don't know how many elements they type in per se, so we're gonna use this length so that we can change this loop and this loop will never crash. It will always work because we're just simply getting the length of the array. Now, if I were to do equal here, I hope you guys realize this would cause us an issue. And that's because we have six elements in the array, right? But it's gonna allow us to get i to the value six because that's the length of the array. Now, what happens if I try to do this? ARR of six. Well, we should know from the last video that that will actually crash our program. And that's because when we start, we start at zero and our last element in the array is actually gonna be index five, right? Because we go zero all the way um, to the length minus one, which is five. So array six does not actually exist. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna uh, write a little program inside this for loop. And I'm just gonna say, if the value is equal to five, we're gonna print it out. So how do I do this? I'm gonna say if ARR at index i, is equal to the value five, then we're simply gonna do a system dot out dot print ln. I just realized there's a comma there, all right. Semicolon, and we're simply going to print the value. So in this case, we could print ARI, which we know is gonna be five, or we could just type five, because we know that it's there. So in this case, let's just do found a five, exclamation point, okay? That's what we'll print to the screen. So again, the reason this is gonna work is because we're looping through starting at zero and going to, but not but not including the length of the array. Make sure you remove that equal sign, otherwise you're gonna get a crash, okay? So that way we're gonna look at every single element in this array, we're gonna check its value, and then if we find a five, we're gonna print it. So let's see if this works. Found a five and found a five. Now, if I wanted to be more precise and say like where I found this five, I could say found a five at index, and we'll just put a plus sign and then we can put I. And what this is gonna do is it's actually just gonna automatically convert this into a string for us and print it out with uh, this index. So we're gonna put a space here just so they don't get smushed together. But it says found a five at index one, found a five at index five. And we know this is true. Uh, index one is here, index five is here. And that's a really simple way that we can loop through a list and look for a certain value, okay? Now, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about looping through arrays in a different way that is easier than this, uh, and it's called for each, okay? Uh, that'll be in the next video, and then after that we're gonna go into while loops, and then once we finish while loops, we'll be going into collections like sets and stuff like that, and then getting into all the object-oriented program. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you again in the next one.